Hi everyone, welcome back. This week in level F, we're going to be going over lessons 133 through 136. You will need worksheets 114 through 117, the four in one ruler, the meter stick, and the Casio calculator. There are no games um, scheduled this week in the lessons, probably because the the lessons themselves are fairly challenging. However, if your child would like to play a game, please by all means, let him or her choose one. In lesson 133, we will be converting area and volume units. The warm up questions have to do with the volume formula, and it's been a little while since we've gone over that. So if your child happened to forget the formula, that's fine. Just go ahead and share it with them again and go through the details of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at conversion factors for metric area. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start off a little, you know, just real basic here um, and ask the question, how many centimeters are in a decimeter? Your child will know that there's 10. So then tell them to write the conversion factors. So the conversion factor is that there's one decimeter per 10 centimeters or 10 centimeters per one decimeter. And as the book says, we don't normally say the one when it's in the denominator. So this would be 10 centimeters per decimeter. Okay, so then the next question is, how many square centimeters are in a square decimeter? The answer is 100. But if your child isn't confident with that, go ahead and let them look at their ruler to visualize what the answer might be. That's a pretty helpful thing. So how do we write those conversion factors? So we would write one square decimeter per 100 square centimeters or 100 square centimeters per decimeter squared. So let's take a look at that first example. It says we're moving from square centimeters to square decimeters. And how can we do that? So if we have 250 square centimeters, we're going to convert that to how many decimeters? So 250 square centimeters times the conversion factor, which is one square decimeter per 100 square centimeters. And we can cancel out these two labels right here. So now we're just left with 250 times 1 divided by 100, which gives us 2.5 square decimeters. So the very last problem on the worksheet involves volume, and we're moving from cubic feet to cubic yards. Okay, so the problem, we're looking for volume. And we know that a driveway is 20 feet long by 12 feet wide by 4 inches thick. And that would be a third of a foot. So that equals 80 cubic feet. So now we need to convert those cubic feet to cubic yards. So we have the 80 cubic feet, and you don't have to rewrite this if you can write it out all in a line. I just don't have room. So 80 cubic feet times the conversion factor, which would be one cubic yard per 27 cubic feet. And we can cancel out this and cancel out this. And we have 80 cubic yards divided by 27, which gives us nine, uh, sorry, 2.96 cubic yards. OK, 
Okay, so when your student has finished the worksheet, ask the in conclusion question and we'll move on to the next lesson. So for lesson 134, there is a correction. Please follow the link in the description if your book was printed before April 18th of 2018. In this lesson, we will be converting between systems, for example, feet to centimeters. Ask the oral warm-up questions and then discuss the history of the US and the metric system. Let's take a look at the third problem. Okay, so the third problem says, find how many kilometers are in a mile. So we're moving from miles to feet, to inches, to centimeters, to meters, to kilometers. That is, that's quite a bit of factoring going on in there. Okay, so we're going to start off with one mile equals one mile times 5,280 feet for one mile. And that is multiplied by 12 inches per foot. And we know that there's 2.54 centimeters per inch. And I'm barely going to have room. I probably won't. I'll just put the multiplication sign there and come back over here. Um, how many meters are equivalent to centimeters, right? So we have one meter per 100 centimeters. And then we're moving on to kilometers. So we have one kilometer per a thousand meters. And that will give us our answer. So we can go through and factor out all of the labels that are repeats. There we go. The centimeters, centimeters, meters, meters, and we're just left with kilometers. And as we're doing our multiplying and dividing, we end up, and your child is welcome, I would say encouraged to use the Calcio calculator for this problem. So we have 1.6093 four, four kilometers per mile. And most of us just know that it's 1.6. That's good enough. Okay, so remember our goal is to work the problems well and to understand them kind of inside and out, not to rush through them and maybe get 100 done. So there are only four problems on the worksheet, but your child should be spending time really thinking through the process, okay? So go ahead and ask the in-conclusion question, and then we'll move on to lesson 135. So in this lesson, we will review exponents and working on converting compound units. The warm-up questions review what different units measure. And so let's take a look at how to deal with exponents and canceling. Okay, so let's take a look at problem number two. In problem number two, we're moving from cubic decimeters to cubic centimeters. So we have one cubic decimeter and remember, for when we're canceling, we need to have one decimeter for every exponential number here. So that's what this is going to look like. This says one decimeter times 10 centimeters per one decimeter. So we can cancel out those decimeters times one decimeter times 10 centimeters per one decimeter. We can eliminate those times one decimeter times 10 centimeters per one decimeter equals 1,000 cubic centimeters. 
So you may be wondering, okay, I don't really understand why we're doing it so many times. What we're doing, this here represents one here. And the next one would represent it if it was squared. And the third one is standing in for that cube here. So we have to do this process, the factoring process, three times because it's cubic decimeters. When your student has finished that worksheet, go ahead and ask the in conclusion question. And then we'll move on to our last lesson, which is 136. It does have two corrections, so please follow the link if your book was printed before October 1st of 2020. In this lesson, we will be working on converting rates. So go ahead and ask the warm-up questions, and then let's take a look at a few of these problems. Okay, in problem two, it says that LC flies from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles in five hours. The return return trip takes four and a half hours. The distance one way is 2,300 miles. What is the plane's average speed in miles per hour for the entire trip? So remember that our formula is rate, that's the speed, equals distance over time. So we know that the trip is 2,300 miles times two, each way, and that the time was five hours plus four and a half hours. So that's nine and a half hours. And that equals, once you've multiplied and then divided, we get 484 miles per hour. We will also take a look at problem number three, but before doing so, I wanted to point out, remember that the formula is R equals D over T, distance over time equals rate. But of course, depending on what you know, you can flip this around. Now in our last problem, we knew the distance and we knew the time and we figured out the rate. In this next one, the question is, all of us taking a train in Japan from here, Hiroshima to Osaka. The distance is 282 kilometers and the train's average speed is 200 kilometers per hour. So we know the rate and we know the distance, but we don't know the time. How long will the trip take? Now, it, it is sometimes very difficult for children, well, adults as well probably, to rework this formula when they're dealing with large numbers. So we can simplified and just deal with small numbers, okay? So what if we said three is the rate, six is the distance, and two is the time? How could we rewrite this and make it still true? So we could say that the time equals the distance over the rate, that would still be mathematically true, right? So we could rewrite that formula as time equals distance over rate. So I, I just wanna go through that with you first before we throw those big numbers at your student. Okay, so let's take a look. So this is what we're gonna use because we know the distance and the rate for this one. So time, equals one hour over uh, per 200 kilometers. And we're going to multiply that by the 282 kilometers that the train actually travels. And we can cross out the kilometers. And that gives us 1.4 
one hours. Okay, so the next portion of the problem is um, to turn the 0 0.41 hours into minutes because most people don't talk like this unless you're doing a timesheet. So we're going to write 0 0.41 hours times 60 minutes per hour. And we can cross out the hours equals 24.6 minutes. So if we just round that up, we have 25 minutes, right? So the, the whole trip took one hour and 25 minutes. All right, you can finish up by asking me in conclusion question and you are done for this week. Thanks for joining me and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.